All right, Great Lakes Distillery. How are we doing tonight? Oh, come on, we can be better than that. How are we doing tonight? Oh, that's what I like to hear. We got a ton of amazing comedians here for you guys tonight. We're here to make you laugh, make you smile, and make you forget about life for a while. All we ask is please keep the table chatter to a minimum. No heckling the comedians. No recording us unless we ask you to. And most importantly, tip your fabulous bartenders there behind you. How does that sound? Fantastic. My name is Michael McChesney. I will be your host for this evening. Uh, I've been working on myself a lot lately. In fact, I'm really proud to say this. Since 2020, I have officially lost 75 pounds. Thank you so much. It's a lot of work, but the weird thing about losing weight is you start to get a lot of weird compliments from people. My friend told me the other day that I looked like Ryan Gosling. If he was playing the role of a disabled car mechanic. <laughs> Oddly specific, especially since I am already a car mechanic. So now I'm not even mad, I'm just confused. Like, which is it? Do I look disabled or do I look like Ryan Gosling? Do I look like a Ken doll, or do I look like I'll chew on one? <laughs> My one piece of advice for you fabulous people about losing weight is don't, don't ever do it. I was way happier when I was chubby. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I used to be able to eat whatever I wanted, feel no shame. The other day, I looked at a cupcake just a little bit too long. I felt like a whore. <laughs> Guys, I have never wanted something inside me so badly before in my life. It made everybody at Piggly Wiggly very uncomfortable. I saw a friend from high school the other day. Uh, we weren't hanging out. He was getting arrested for stalking a girl. Yeah. See, and it wasn't the stalking that bothered me, really. It was his defense of it. All right? This guy, mid-arrest, tells the cops that this is romance. The women like this, they want to be pursued, they enjoy the chase. I chimed in like, yeah man, the chase, not being chased. It's will they, won't they, not will he catch me. There are no pretty young girls running for their lives down dark alleyways just going, isn't he Prince Charming? Like honey, just cause he'll kiss you while you're asleep does not make him a prince. I spent the weekend in Iowa recently Beautiful state, not a lot to do, so like a real American, I got drunk at a gun range. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you guys, after two hours at the range, I get it now. I went there a liberal, I left a libertarian. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> now my grandpa won't talk to me for totally different reasons. <laughs> On my way back, we checked out the world's largest ball of popcorn. Uh, where was the world's largest ball, you ask? Sac City. Because some jokes just write themselves. <laughs> the town even built a nice little house to display the ball, uh, presumably just to ruin my day, because I couldn't enjoy the sights anymore. All I could think is, this is America. The world's largest popcorn ball gets a house, but I don't. <laughs> you can't even blame that on the economy. I mean, that's why there's a homelessness issue. We'll all get together to build the world's largest musty ball a house, but when Jeff loses everything in the divorce, suddenly he's not the world's largest anything. Even if Jeff ends up being the world's largest homeless person, we're not going to give him a house. He'll just get gout. The community won't even build a door his size at the shelter. Uh, I saw a woman while I was in Iowa wearing a Save the Rainforest t-shirt. And you can't be an activist if you live in a corn maze. All right? I looked at her like, Tammy, you live in Iowa. You've never seen a rainforest. And after your fourth DUI, you never will. <laughs> also, Great Lakes, can I ask you guys this? Why are we trying to save the rainforest? Oh, you know that place filled with nightmares and spiders? We should preserve that. Why? I am terrified of spiders. If I see one spider in the Kettle Moraine Forest, I am burning Wisconsin to the ground. It's why I'm not allowed back in Canada. That one's a bit of a slow burn. Yeah. <laughs> I was bar hopping with some friends the other day, and while we were on our way to the next bar, uh, one of the girls I was with started to get catcalled. From behind us, we just hear a man yell, Damn, that is a five-star ass! 
So I turn around like, leave her alone. And he's like, we were talking to you. And I was like, shoot. <laughs> I mean, we're heading to another bar. <laughs> if you can't tell by my vape shop Harry Potter vibes, I am bisexual. Which means I'm straight enough to play sports, but not straight enough to understand them. <laughs> like, I play basketball, but if you ask me the rules, I'm at a loss. If you ask me what position I play, I'm at a loss. What position do I play? I don't know. I'm a top, but my dad thinks I'm a bottom. <laughs> my dad ha and I have a complex relationship. Uh, he called me recently to pitch me a joke about glory holes. Right? I was like, dude, this is the first time we've talked in over a year. I know you want a relationship with your son, but I'm not meeting you at Lacage. Let's dial it back a bit. Like I said, I'm bi, which means in this one specific instance, my sexuality is technically a choice. But I have a girlfriend, so I made the wrong one. It's good to be in a relationship, though. I am way too impulsive to be single, and she knows how to say no to me. The other day I saw this pug. He had two legs and wheels where his hind legs weren't. His name was Alfred. I ran up to her all excited. I'm like, babe, look at his little face. Can we adopt him? She's like, oh, look at your little face. You're off your meds. <laughs> like Alfred's wheels, she keeps me on track. No, but uh, she wants to get a puppy though. We do want to get a dog. She wants to get a puppy. I want to get a retired canine. I think it would be awesome. I smoke pot, he's an ex-cop. We'd be the next big show on Fox. We'd be like Shaggy and Scooby if Scooby-Doo was produced by Dick Wolf. Plus, canines come pre-trained. They can do things that I can't do, like defend my home, save a relationship, or find my weed when I lose it. All equally important things. I want to marry her, I really do, um, but I don't trust wedding rings. Here's why, does anybody here know what a blood diamond is? You get it, you know what a blood diamond is. Essentially, if somebody died digging it up, it's a blood diamond. That's awful, but I'm pretty sure, as a country, we are one Netflix documentary away from advertising them on the holidays. I'm honestly here for it. K Jewelers, because one life has to end for yours to begin. It doesn't have to be positive. You can flip it on the competition. This holiday season, shop sales. Because if you went to Jared, somebody died in Jordan. I'll leave you guys on this. I recently turned 26. You can cheer. I'm one, I'm, I'm one year closer to death. I'm excited about that. No, but, but 26 is such a bad birthday. I mean, the only thing I got for my birthday this year was kicked off my parents' insurance. Yeah, which means I have to get insurance through my company now, which also means I can't have a manic episode and quit my job like, I want to be a dancer. <laughs> These dancing shoes require custom insoles. I can't afford to be footloose and financially free. <laughs> On an unrelated note, I am trying to fit all of my doctor's appointments into one month. I went to the optometrist recently, eye doctor for stupid people like me. And I told them that my vision was getting blurry, cross-eyed, and rooms feel like they're spinning. You know what this guy told me? To stop showing up drunk. I was like, you're my optometrist, not my therapist. Fix my eyes, not my life, medicine man. Are you guys ready for your next performer? Oh, come on, I need you to be a little bit louder. Are you ready for your next performer tonight? Then give it up for the very funny Daryl Cochran, everyone!